What's up savvy expats? You know what's funny? Of every informative expat channel that you've watched, I probably sound like the biggest broken record. Because all you ever hear me talk about is Bonifacio Global City, BGC this, BGC that, BGC is a place to be. But as we're beginning to expand our services outside of Manila, I think it's only right that we begin to talk about the topic of where I would choose to live if I didn't live in BGC. Now don't get me wrong, for my personal lifestyle preferences, there's no place that even compares to Bonifacio Global City for me. And I wouldn't even consider leaving the city anytime soon for any other place just because it's become my home. But if I weren't to live in BGC, where would I live as an alternative? You know, the kind of place that boasts Philippines world-class nature, has a solid, diverse crowd of people, and a place where we can genuinely enjoy the leisurely activities that it has to offer. Well, you guessed it, and I happen to be here right now for the Easter holiday. That's right, the surfing capital of the Philippines, Shergao. Now, let me get one thing straight. This video is not a sales pitch as to why you should move to Shergao. If anything, I have zero incentive to promote this place because it's already filled with expats. But the purpose of this episode is to give you insight into the contrast of life that you can live in the Philippines as opposed to living in a city that we always talk about like BGC or the city life in the Philippines in general. Because if you've been a follower of the channel, as you know, we really talk about that as much as it already is. So take this episode as you may, whether you're more keen on retiring in a beach environment like Shergao or like Cebu, or you're like me and you want more of the modern city life. That said, buckle up and we're going to get into why I like Shergao and even to the extent of why I've actually considered living here for months on end when I'm tired of city life. The first reason why I could have considered Shergao as home or second home is because of the crowd and the demographic of people here. Now, I'll keep it real, I wouldn't say that living in Shergao in particular would give you the authentic Philippine experience other than the atmosphere and the nature that you get. And the reason I say this is largely due to the fact that this is a very heavily pronounced tourist destination and a lot of foreigners live on the island. And I know for some of you guys that could be a deal breaker just because one of the reasons you're coming to the Philippines is for the people, the Philippine people, and you want to be away from Westerners perhaps. But for me personally, I don't mind as long as I'm just surrounded by good, genuine people. And so far during my trips out here, everyone seems to be so down to earth very kind, chill, and laid back. And I guess you could say it's an island effect that it has on everyone here. The best way I can describe the demographic of people you have here is diverse and young. In a sense, it's quite similar to Bali, except in its early stages before it became very mainstream on social media. Because what you'll find here, and I've experienced this firsthand after being out, is a lot of tourists that's coming from UK, US, Australia, and especially around all of Europe. And the second group of individuals I noticed that come here to Shergao is that demographic of individuals who originally came here for vacation, but they ended up catching a case of the island syndrome and just never ended up leaving. Then of course, you also have the extremely chill Shergao locals who are always a blast to be around. Now, what I like about the crowd in Shergao is just as you'd imagine as people on an island, is that everyone here is extremely laid back and very easy to strike up a conversation with. And as a young person, it's beautiful to come across people that come from all walks of life and to hear their story as to why they left the West for an island like Shergao. And yes, I'm aware, an island like Shergao and the crowd that we have here is probably not ideal for the majority of you watching and within retirement age. And I can imagine that if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, there's not much of a desire to be around a digital nomad younger crowd like they have here in Shergao. However, if you are considering a vacation spot, I highly recommend it. Because if anything, you're probably looking for a lifestyle of convenience, solid healthcare, everything being nearby, and a daily routine that's consistent to do whatever you want whenever you please. And that's why you see on this channel we tout BGC so much, meaning that the majority of our clientele is retirees looking for that type of convenience. But all in all, Shergao boasts a younger crowd, many digital nomads, and very kind locals. Now, before we move into the second reason why Shergao is a great destination to come to, just a reminder, our doors are open for our one-to-one -one expat relocation services in the Philippines and we've now expanded beyond Manila. So if you're considering places like Cebu, Iloilo, heck even Shergao because of this video, we can take care of the entire A to Z process and logistics of your transition. From finding your ideal rental to securing the lease and even getting your visa 
and banking matters taken care of, we'll remove all the uncertainties and unknowns that come with your move. That said, if you need assistance with your move, book a call with me in the link in the description and we'll see if you're a good fit to work with me, especially being that we're running out of slots for the coming months. Now, the second reason why Shergao is a considerable destination to either retire or move to is because, especially in comparison to Manila, the cleaner air and the better sun. It goes without saying, but of course, any province outside of Manila will of course have better quality air than Manila. And while I do feel like BGC and Makati's air quality is a notch above the rest of Manila, just being how spread out it is, when you go to the province like I am right now, it's a world of a difference, especially when you're in a beach environment. Living in Manila full time as I do, these are things that you really think about. But as soon as you step out to the province, especially in a place like Shergal, the air quality is completely noticeable. Not to mention, the sun feels amazing out here in Shergal. Of course, any of the islands of the Philippines will give you a nice sun kiss, but just personally, what I notice when you're out in the concrete jungle of Manila or maybe even Cebu, what I notice there is that the sun almost beats down on you. It feels a lot harsher than when you're in a beach environment, of course. But at least in a place like Shergao, you have the pure air and the tropical waters to cool you down when you're feeling hot and you need a refreshing sweat. And so as someone who was born and raised in a place like Windy City, Chicago, having tropical weather like this is something that I'm extremely grateful for. Now, the third reason why I enjoy Shergao is because of the diversity of restaurants here. I know there's two types of expats. The first type that absolutely love and adore Filipino food. They get their hands dirty into adobo, sinigang, whatever it may be. And then you have the second type, which is the expat that will not touch Filipino food with a 10 foot pole. Because for most expats, it's no secret that Filipino food isn't the healthiest of options. And although I do love Filipino food, many of the options that we have in our cuisine usually involves pork, high cholesterol, or fried and grease. And let me tell you, and I know we can all agree on this, when we're on vacation, we like to pig out on food and sometimes we get a little too carried away. And then you come back home, you hop on the scale, and there's a few more extra pounds on you than when you left. But when I spend time in Shergao, if anything, actually a lot healthier out here on the island than I do when I'm in BGC Manila. Because what you'll find in Shergao is that a solid percentage of the restaurants here are expat owned. So with that, you get authentic food from cuisines from around the world that are actually made right and are very healthy because the ingredients are naturally sourced here. For me, that's a real treat because with many of the international food restaurants in Manila, especially if they're locally owned, you'll find that it's not really authentic. Most of you watching this are most likely not going to retire in Shergao. You're probably going to come here to visit. So I do have a good list of restaurants for you to try out when you come out here. Some of my favorite options here is Happiness for Mediterranean food, Bravo Resort, which has all types of options, Shaka for healthy smoothie bowls, White Beard for good morning coffee and pancakes, Spotted Pig for also good breakfast options and coffee, Goodies, and then also Lamari for Italian food. And so these are my top picks for Shergao completely unsponsored. Now, the fourth reason why I love Shergao, especially after being cooped up within the bustling city life, is because of the slower pace and stress-free lifestyle here. Of course, this aspect of life is applicable to any of the provinces outside of the major cities in the Philippines, but an unignorable aspect that I love about Shergao, and this is probably because I'm on vacation, of course, so there is some bias involved, is that I live completely stress-free even when I am doing my work out here on the island. You wake up in the morning, you check the surf, go out with your board, catch a few waves. Come by afternoon, you can bang out some work on your laptop before having a meal beachside. And then in the evening, you can lay out on a tropical beach, nice drink in your hand, good company, perhaps dinner. And the best part is it's just rinse and repeat. So even for me, especially in comparison to life back in Chicago, even BGC already feels like slow paced city life just because of the pace of life that we have back in Illinois. But when I come up to Shergao, it's a different kind of relaxation. Although, granted, yes, I am on vacation. So with the calming waters combined with the kind people that live out here, it's a great detox from city life. Now, the fifth and last reason why Shergao is a great place is because of the reasonable cost of living. The quality of life you get in Shergao for how much it actually costs to live here is phenomenal in my opinion. Even on vacation where we're splurging and we're spending tons on food, surfing packages, accommodation and whatnot at a resort, the cost of living is still very reasonable. And the thing is, how much you spend here in comparison to a place like BGC where in general, you're gonna be spending over 1.5 to 2K minimum. Here in Shergao, what you spend is completely up to you 
and is adjustable according to your budget. And if you don't want to spend a ton on food, there's many local shops, stores, and restaurants that you can choose from here. Not to mention, to get your hand on some fresh coconut juice to hydrate is probably only a couple of cents. Now, if we're talking living accommodation, this will really depend and range on what you're looking for. Of course, if you want your own villa near the beach, which is actually very hard to find unlike Thailand, of course, it's just going to come with a very high rental rate. But let's say you're outside of the main touristy boulevards like General Luna or you're not on Tourist Road. In that case, of course, your rental rate and cost of living will be much, much lower. We're talking $500 to $1,000 per month. And actually, let me show you right now. I know we're at the end of the video, so I wish I could have showed you guys this sooner. But right now, we're at a beautiful place called G Villas. Staff here is amazing. And I usually just do my work over here with a cigar. This place, G Villas, I mean, that's my room right there. Um, my family is booked to stay there for about a month and we're not paying anything more than 1K to 1.5K. And it's a beautiful villa, very close to the beach. I think, and I can imagine that this is the kind of lifestyle that the majority of you are looking to live when you come out to the Philippines. And I know it's not like Thailand or Vietnam where you can get these crazy 250 USD villas insane value near the beach, very beautiful, but it is a similar lifestyle that you can maintain here in Shergao. Of course, higher cost living, but it is in the Philippines, English speaking and different perks here. And so there you have it, Savvy Expats. We finally talked and covered a place outside of BGC within recent months. So I hope that this video was a refresher and opened your eyes to new places to live outside of the city life or to just even visit like myself. And I understand that Shergao may not be the ideal place for a lot of you retirees. So this episode, keep in mind, was really geared towards my personal preferences and what I actually like and enjoy. By the way, if you're planning on moving to the Philippines and you need guidance, you need the ins and outs and the know-hows, we have a free 15-step checklist resource in the link in the description down below. This checklist will break down the initial steps that you need to take for a successful move to the Philippines from preparation stage to arrival to actually residing here. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats. As always, it was a pleasure and we'll see you in the next video. God bless.